Hi and welcome to our web design video blog. This week we wanted to share five simple tips for improving the speed of your web pages. Firstly, make sure you buy good hosting. Secondly, combine any external files. And thirdly, image size optimization. Fourthly, efficient use of HTML and CSS. And finally, sourcing your RSS from FeedBurner. Firstly then, avoid cheap hosting. Select a large and reliable company to host your or your client's websites. If you're in the UK, we would recommend using a reputable company like FastHost. If your hosting isn't up to scratch, then all other efforts to speed up your website might be in vain. As we move on to the actual construction of the website, our next step is to combine external JavaScript and CSS files. You can download the supporting files uh, we're using here on our supporting blog post at createdesign.kk forward slash blog forward slash videos. Inside the page speed folder, there's a folder called JavaScript to uh, demonstrate this more effectively. So I've opened this up in Dreamweaver. Um, let's say we've got a website that uses uh, JavaScript like this for Flash purposes, and then we have a second JavaScript file for uh, just basic image rollovers. What we can actually do, instead of having two separate files and the server having to source both of them individually, is combine them onto a single scripts file all on the same page. So this cuts down on the amount of files that the server has to load and also allows you a single um, page to manage all of your JavaScripts on. And exactly the same process can be applied to uh, external style sheets as well. So thirdly is image size. Again, if you open up on our supporting files the index page, uh, what we've done here is made uh, two graphics, both the same, but one's uh, saved it as a GIF at medium quality, which comes to 12 kilobytes. And then we've uh, saved the same picture as a JPEG at 100% quality through Safer Web, and it comes through at 33 kilobytes. So it's obvious to notice that the JPEG, even though the quality to the eye doesn't appear any better, is actually three times the file size. So if you use Photoshop's Safer Web tool correctly, and we've done a separate uh, video explaining the best way to use Photoshop Safer Web, which is also on YouTube, you can actually save quite large file sizes through your images. You can spend a lot of time and effort refining the optimization on your CSS and HTML and um, only save sort of you know 20 30 kilobytes which is the same amount of file size you can save by correctly saving just one image like in this example here so fourthly is the efficient use of html and mainly css as you uh, get more experience with css you actually find ways to use less code and uh, make it more efficient Again, in the example, we've got a uh, page here, and you can see that there's two sentences. One is styled using inline CSS, and one is used, sorry, one is styled using external CSS that's sourced from the style sheet. So if we have a look at the code view, the first paragraph, which is here, as you can see, that has inline CSS. Now, this bogs down the actual HTML page, and it doesn't necessarily need to be there. It should be on this separate external style sheet, like our second sentence, that references a class that can be found on the stylesheet.css like in the example here. And the good thing about doing that is that you can then use the same class or um, reference later on in the HTML page, and you only actually have to use it once on the style sheet rather than writing out inline styles for all of your uh, HTML. The second thing with uh, using CSS is to use optimized CSS. And again, we have a separate video on optimizing CSS that's uh, also on our YouTube channel as a previous video blog. In the example, uh, this uh, class here, dot example, you can see that all of the margins are specified in uh, a quite long piece of CSS, whereas you can achieve the exact same parameters by using shorthand CSS, like on the example on line six. So the margin goes top, right, bottom, left, instead of actually having to specify all of the individual attributes in the primary example here. So using optimized CSS and generally just using as little code as possible in both your CSS and HTML is quite a big uh, factor when it comes to reducing the file sizes of your individual pages and files. The final tip, and this only applies if you have RSS feeds on your website, is to utilize Google's FeedBurner tool. You can find FeedBurner at feedburner.google.com and it's a completely free service and you can uh, put through this as many feeds as you wish. So what you basically do is feed um, your RSS into uh, your FeedBurner account. This then creates a alternative RSS feed that you can then source on your website. Uh, so this is particularly useful if you're using things like WordPress. You replace the uh, default HTML and PHP that uh, is in the theme with the FeedBurner embed. And this loads up your RSS onto your website for users a lot quicker. If you're also using aggregators, uh, like Magpie or SimplePie, like down here on the right-hand side, 
It also loads them a lot quicker, as if you use uh, the direct source to the WordPress feed, it takes a little bit longer and there's a slight pause. So using Google Feed Burner to display your RSS feeds increases the load time of your web pages. We've selected these tips not just as a one-time checklist to take back to your website, but as a simple guide for building web pages in the future. There are also many useful tools available for web designers to monitor and improve the speed of your web pages. A good first port of call is Google's Webmaster Tools. So Webmaster Tools are a free service provided by Google and you can add your website or websites into your account. And if you click on Labs on the left, and then site performance, uh, Webmaster Tools gives you a basic overview of uh, performance, page speed, and also gives you some uh, general tips and advice that you can do use to increase the uh, load time of your pages. You'll also see at the bottom that they uh, recommend using a Firefox plugin called Page Speed. If you've already got uh, the Firefox uh, plugin called Firebug, it builds on that. So if we look at a example site like one we're currently developing called Houston's Bar and Grill, and you click on Firebug, once you've got page speed installed, you'll see it appear here. And you can actually analyze the page and run a quick report. And it gives you a page score out of 100. And uh, as you can see, it gives you tips and advice for reducing the uh, file sizes and load times of your web pages. Thank you for watching this week. Please leave any questions, comments on our supporting blog post at creadesign.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash videos.